So we just got our first engagement of the day. Something was chewing on this mackerel. There's some weight. Oh. You got him? You're bendo. <laughs> we are bendo. Oh. oh no. Oh, we're bendo. <laughs> I'm pretty much button that drag, get him off the bottom. And like he's still taking drag. Oh, he popped off. Did he? Oh, no. Woo, son. I told you there's some big ones here, man. That's nuts. Dude. You guys just I'll missed the it. most epic hook set. <laughs> well, it ran off with it. I either snagged a white fish or it's another sheep. Head. I think you are on to something with that crawfish <laughs> and Cajun seasoning combination. Yeah, it's got to be the Cajun. Oh, dude, right kind. There we go. We're eating. That was on. That was on the craw, dude. Dude, oh, the craw is yeah. coming through. Well, it looks like we're starting to figure things out. That's like the third or fourth fish on the crawfish. <laughs> well, somebody made the right call, apparently. Just glide down, down and then boom. On the glide down. On the glide down. Today on Big Bass Jeans, we're talking about gliding down squid. Oh, he's pulling. Or monsters. Pulling. Put a bend in that Valkyrie, come on. He's pulling. Any guesses? What are you hoping it is? I'm hoping it is a red snapper, but it is a sheep's head. What? And Target it's a keeper. <laughs> Look at that. Dude, nice. That's there a nice go. little. Oh, Ooh, oh, tried to bite me. Yeah. <laughs> That is a nice one. Dude, look at that. Very cool, dude. Try to get a Sick, proper grip on that right thing. in the freaking schnoz. Sucker for the gliding squid. BKK right to the lip. Awesome. How much fun was that? That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Saw little taps, little taps, little taps, and then, like he said, something big came in. Just goo 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 goo. What's the update, Parker? Well, I hooked something big, but I'm on a little tiny hook. And uh, so I've just loosened up my drag a bit. So if he pulls hard, it won't break the hook or pull it out of his mouth. So I'm just gonna kind of fight him like a trout. And see how that goes for me. <laughs> fight him like a trout. That's the most bend I've seen put into that Valkyrie today. Yeah. Arm's getting tired. <laughs> right arm or left arm? Let me know what you get. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's a sheepy! Oh, no. <laughs> and the black rifle is in the water. Look Got at that. Him. Oh, that's oh gosh. Oh, look at all those burps. Dude. That's a nice one. Hey. Got him. With the black rifle. That's a triple. <laughs> triple <laughs> shot. <laughs> triple shot espresso. That's a good one, bud. Woo -wee. <laughs> On the little strip. Strip of squid, huh? Of course. Tiny strip squid. I've got cornhole twice now with a big mackerel with a heavy gear and a big old hook and this guy drops a little white fish hook that's a good one. with a strip and catches a, a good one. But that's just how fishing works. <laughs> how fun was that? That was super fun. He fought, fought pretty hard. All the way up too. I don't give up. Thanks buddy. That's rad. That was he's rad. Good. Little knockhead. Yeah, he's starting to make take shape. Yeah. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Oliver and I here got a pretty unique fish I want to share with you guys you guys may have seen a video I shot with a really big sheephead uh, a few years ago fishing with Eric Johnson but just got home to sunny Southern California and got out with my man Adam Baker and Parker Wright and we went targeting really really big California sheephead now we just got off the road now when you talk about sheephead that means totally different fish depending on your region. In the Northeast, it's a freshwater drum. In the Gulf States and the Southeast portion of the country, it's a whole different human tooth bearing looking weird fish. But here in Southern California, we're talking about the California sheephead. And this is a very unique fish. What's unique about these fish is that they're transgender fish. The entire population starts off as females, as you've seen here. And generally there's only one big dominant male on a piece of cover or within a territory. So those males will go through a transformation. They'll go from a female and start developing this big old nod head and get these big black vertical bars on the head and the tail portion. 
and every other California sheephead in that vicinity will stay in a female role, uh, even up to uh, this probably four or five pound class fish without its head. Uh, it's a very fascinating fish, but what I love about these fish is that number one, they bite hard and they fight hard. Uh, you're gonna see in this catch and cook segment, me getting my ass kicked by a really big sheephead and actually broke my line, 40 plus pound leader, gone like that. So next time I go around, we're probably gonna put on some 60 or 80 pound just to be sure but we did catch some beautiful eating size fish. We like keeping these sub five pound class females for the table. We've been releasing the big males to continue dominating those wrecks and offshore structures and hard bottom spots here on the California coast. These fish are also one of my favorite fish to eat and that's because they feed heavily on mollusks and crustaceans. Uh, sea urchins, mussels, clams, crabs, shrimp, baby lobsters, so they take on a whole different consistency, texture, color, and flavor to their flesh. And today I'm gonna finally get to prepare one in one of my favorite ways. And you guys have seen me do this with black crappie on this channel before. And it's good with crappie. It, the black crappie is probably the pinnacle of freshwater fish to steam Chinese style with the green onions, the ginger, the cilantro, and the soy sauce. But when it comes to our local saltwater fish, I don't think you can beat a California sheephead. So follow along, uh, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Plenty of catch and cook stuff coming, plenty of adventure stuff, freshwater bass fishing, adventure fishing, you name it. Uh, we're pushing hard here. It's end of 2021, it's been an incredible year. It's going to be an incredible year in 2022. Uh, we've got a new addition to, to the fam. We got Fife Dog, <laughs> Fife the Dreamer, uh, causing mayhem around here somewhere. But uh, make sure you guys tune in. And I'm going to show you guys really quickly how to make this super simple, easy dish. The beauty of this recipe is in its simplicity. We're going to be using a traditional oven to steam these fish because I don't have this complicated giant wok and other apparatus. So I'm going to show you guys some of my cheat code stuff. We're going to use a casserole dish, uh, some aluminum foil, a little bit of water, and we're going to steam these fish in the standard oven. But the first thing you want to do, and depending on how big these sheep head are, is you want to either leave the head on a smaller model like this. This is like a 13 inch fish and cut the head off of the larger units so they fit inside your casserole dish. And all we did was we gill and gutted each one of these, took out the organs, took out the gills, left the head on these, and I do like keeping the skin on these fish. And I've got one of these super cool scalers here from the Sage Company, and I use this thing all over the country. These sheephead are pretty robust fish, so they'll bust up a spoon and I don't have the patience or the skill to remove these scales with a fillet knife. So we've got our sheep head, gill gutted, scaled. What I'm gonna do to help facilitate some even cooking is give this bigger fish a couple of diagonal slices down to the spine. Next step is to simply lay our fish here in the casserole dish. Normally these fish are cooked and steamed in a big wok, but since we're improvising, because I don't own a wok, some of you guys probably don't either, I want to get my water inside the casserole dish, and I just got this little sauce cup here. And I'm gonna place that inside the dish as my source of water to create the steam. We're just gonna take some aluminum foil, get Okay, just enough to make sure we can make a tight seal around the edges. These casserole dishes are nice because you can wrap them very tight around those handles. We're just gonna pop this in the oven. You want a nice tight seal so that steam can actually convect 
And we're going to turn this bad boy on to about 400 degrees. And with those fish being that size, I'm going to guess it's going to be 20 to 25 minutes of cook time. While we got the fish steaming in the oven, we're going to go ahead and put together the sauce. And it's really simple. I've used canola oil in the past. Use a little peanut oil in this instance. And we've got some green onion, ginger, and cilantro. And I always start with the ginger. Get this thing going over a medium high heat. Let this cook down and allow those flavors to seep into the oil. You want to get that ginger nice and brown. Turn down the heat a little bit. Put that simmer into that oil. So after the ginger is nice and brown, we're going to put the white portion of the green onion stalks in. Cook those down next. Give that a minute or so to wilt. And then the green portion of the green onion goes in. After a couple minutes, we're going to add our soy sauce. And in this case, we're going to try this gluten-free soy sauce. Nice, healthy portion here. We're going to turn that heat down to a simmer. And let that all come together. After a couple minutes of simmering, we're going to dilute it. Add a little bit of water. It's going to mellow some of the flavors out. Give you a nice, subtle, beautiful sauce to pour over our fish. All right, it's been about 25 minutes. Always be careful when you remove the aluminum foil. Steam burns can be very brutal. And check that out. All right, so we've got the first fish plated. We're gonna put a heap of fresh cilantro on there. Then we're gonna ladle that hot soy sauce concoction with the ginger and the green onions on it. And voila. Bam. There we have it, guys. Classic dish here. Steamed California sheephead. So simple to make. They're so much fun to fish for. This is absolutely delicious. This is the first time in a long time I've actually had sheephead prepared this way. So let's give it the final taste test. You can tell it's done when it just comes right off the bone like that. Let's serve it over a bed of white rice is traditional. You can do brown rice, quinoa, I guess, if you're into that kind of deal. But that's the deal. All right, there it is. One of my favorite dishes for California sheephead. If you guys enjoyed this episode, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below. Are you guys fans of the sheephead with the head or without the head? Are you guys eating the cheek meat off of these things? I don't remember the last time I ever tried that, actually. How about that eyeball? Eh, I'm just kidding, I'm not that Asian. Catch you guys on the next one, Oliver and I. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, ingredient list is be in the description below. I'm gonna enjoy my meal. Catch you guys on the next episode. You a keyboard pirate, my man, that's how the watch rack is. It's the bitch, you catch fish, get him in the neck, quick, cast for another stick. That real deal, raw, uncut, still chasing PBs, cause it's never enough. My drag is yeah. to make you catch fish, get him in the neck, quick, cash for another step. That real deal, raw, uncut, still chasing PBs, cause it's never enough. My Medium drag, light, yeah. graphite for the subtlest bites. Some bright blue skies, not a cloud in sight. It's dynamite when I drop, and the school ignites, pinning them down on the